You've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. Hi, my name is Ian Williams, and I am typically an every other year upgrader. Um, this is my 11 Pro Max, and I have recently upgraded to 13 Pro Max, which I went with white because I kept losing the black one on all my black furniture. Since we're gonna obviously have to talk about the cinematic mode in this camera, it's one of the new big features, I'm gonna shoot the remainder of this vlog on the 13 Pro Max cinematic mode. On this trusty tripod right here next to my Sony Alpha. But the B-roll you see, the clips of the phone you will see will be from the Sony Alpha. So let's get into it with the 13 Pro Max camera. All right, so I actually have to come back and reshoot the cinematic mode footage because I was just, it was just way too blown out, especially in comparison to the a7 III footage and it, it just wasn't done justice. And I get to test out my new um, Rode Wireless Go 2s. So what you're gonna see moving forward is the iPhone 13 Pro Max cinematic mode footage with the Rode Wireless Go receivers and these Power DeWise lapel mics. So you let me know how this combo sounds to you. All right, anyway. All right, so first I'm gonna start off with my own key differences between the phones, starting with the camera. And you can see what other features I'm gonna cover in the description below, I have it chaptered out. And then I'm gonna talk about who I think should upgrade from the 11 to the 13, but ultimately it is up to you. So let's get into it. So yeah, I was sold on this phone as another camera in the arsenal. Uh, so about the quality, both cameras rock a 12 megapixel camera, but, the 13 Pro Max has bigger lenses and a bigger sensor. And that bigger sensor is gonna give you more light, meaning you're gonna get better quality images. So right there lets you know that megapixels aren't everything. Megapixels aren't the end all be all camera spec. All megapixels means is you'll be able to blow your photos up bigger than somebody else can with more megapixels. So yeah, the lenses are also bigger. So with that said, don't try to save a buck. Oh, drop the receiver. So yeah, don't try to save a buck by buying a 12 Pro Max case. Um, it's not gonna work because of the 13 Pro Max's 13 millimeter ultra wide lens. It's just big enough where that 12 Pro Max case won't fit on there. I know from experience. And yeah, I can't talk about the camera without talking about the cinematic mode. So I'm a fan. Um, great work can be shot with this camera. My only gripe about the cinematic mode is it's not actually cinematic. At least yet, it shoots at 30 frames per second and the cinematic standard for the footage is 24 frames per second. So the cinematic mode for right now is only 1080p at 30 frames, but hopefully that changes with the future firmware update. But again, this looks like awesome vlog footage to me. I love the wide angles, but the 11 Pro Max it had very grainy ultra wide angle footage to me and it took some pretty extensive sort of Lightroom editing to make it look good while also getting rid of the noise. Unlike the 13 Pro Max, that still has some noise, but it's a lot less harsh and a lot more manageable to edit and make it look good. And so this camera is also sporting something that no other camera model has, and that's the macro lens. So I'm gonna move my wallet close to the lens at this game I was shooting. And what you'll notice is like this lens change that happens um, because it can only be activated for now by actually moving something so close to the lens that one lens goes out of focus and the macro lens has to catch up or the macro lens will just come on automatically rather. And so it's said that with the future firmware update, we'll be able to switch that on and off at will. But for now, the only way to make it go macro mode is to just move up something really close to it. And then the long telephoto lens on this, you can zoom in, especially with some good light, some good daylight and get some very, very, very passable telephoto long shots. So check out this footage that I was recording at the game I was watching. Um, they are well on the other side of the field and this footage still looks good. This is still a very usable footage, especially as a football highlight. So yeah, man, this thing is a content creation beast as far as the camera goes. You can make some boss content with the three cameras, I guess four that are built into this phone. So one other thing that I have to talk about is the 120 Hertz. And so what that allows you to do is it, it's a, it's a, it doubles the refresh rate 
from most other iPhones. So not only the 11 Pro Max, previously every other phone has had a 60 Hertz refresh rate. And what that's gonna do for you sort of on the day to day is improve the scroll, make it feel smoother. And you'll especially feel it when switching apps. Um, but everyone knows that when it comes to refresh rate, you're gonna catch the attention of gamers because gamers shoot for high refresh rate displays to get as much smooth motion as they can when they game. And so um, with the high refresh rate, I set out to the app store to download one of the most demanding mobile games I knew about. And that game is Marvel Revolutions. So I ran Marvel Revolutions on both the 13 Pro Max and 11 Pro Max and the 13 absolutely destroyed the 11, okay? So, first thing that happened when I booted this up on the 11 Pro Max as opposed to 13, the 11 Pro Max got hot almost instantly. And while it looked good, it looked okay, it looked like a mobile game, playing it on the 13 Pro Max made it look a lot closer to a Switch game. This looked like a very ambitious mobile game when played on the 13 Pro Max. You have improved textures, you see like pixelation around your subjects, and you just get, again, with that 20 hertz, you get a lot more smooth movement, and you just get an overall better gaming experience. So I think mobile game lovers will absolutely love this phone. And again, the 120 hertz, you may not notice it much on your day-to-day. -day. What you'll see it a lot is within Apple's native apps when doing things like switching apps, um, you'll notice on the scroll that you can actually still kind of read text as you're scrolling. It's not just a white blur anymore, a black blur anymore. So it's, it's, it's pretty nice. It's not going to be something a lot of folks notice just unless it's side by side. But every so often, I do feel like this hyper realism on my phone as I'm using it. This extra sort of smooth glide that just improves the experience that much more. All right, next we're going to talk about the size difference. And so... I'm gonna go ahead and say the 13 Pro Max is a freaking brick, bro. Especially in comparison to the 11, it's heavy. Um, so if you're wearing sweats or basketball shorts, tie them mugs up. This is not the phone you wanna hold over your head at night when you're just randomly scrolling. If you drop this thing on your face, you will break your nose. And surprisingly, it's not that much of a weight difference, but it just, when you hold the two phones, it, there's a clear weight difference. But the 13 Pro Max weighs in at 8.5 ounces, while the 11 Pro Max weighs in at 7.97 ounces. And if you're using this phone as your camera, that extra weight does provide you with a little more stability, which is the reason people buy like the mobile phone grips in the first place. Because um, typically with a light phone, you're getting all the handshake, but with a heavier phone or with a mobile phone grip, you're getting a little more weight, that way you can kind of walk around and vlog without having less handshake. Um, depending on how steady of a shooter you are, you can have a completely still shot when using a phone like this. And so another big difference between the 11 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max, um, this is another thing that's kind of a difference with, between every phone, is they did make the notch smaller. Well, it's, the notch is narrower, but it's taller. But it, it, it it also honestly hasn't bothered me at all in my media consumption on my phone. It's a difference that's there, but it's it's gonna be something you don't really care that's different. Until the notch is gone, it's not really gonna feel different. But one of the biggest reasons for upgrading is always that the next phone or the next device has a new latest chip. It's faster, it's this, it's that. The 11 Pro Max is rocking the 813 chip with four gigs of RAM. The 13 Pro Max is rocking your 815 chip with six gigs of RAM, which yes, on paper, the 13 should be faster than the 11. Um, but if you're just doing your Facebook and your Instagram and your emails, your just your everyday apps, you're not gonna feel the difference. I'm not even gonna sit here and do like a side-by-side -side test. It's gonna be like a millisecond different, a second different if anything. Where that chip and that RAM do make a difference, video editing, video editing feels the same, but the 13 Pro Max doesn't get hot as hell when I edit on it like my 11 Pro Max did, which means it's not having to work as hard to do the same exact things I was doing. Let me get that. And so like I was saying, that, that tells me that this phone isn't working as hard as my 11 Pro Max was to edit videos. Now, even though it feels the same, there is a dramatic change in the amount of time it takes me to export a video off my 13 Pro Max, then on my 11 Pro Max. 
On the 11 Pro Max, it was pretty painful. It was painful enough to wait on the exports. And what made it worse is you couldn't leave the app while it was exporting, so you just kind of had to sit there and wait on it. But with the 13 Pro Max, it's a lot more speedy. It's definitely bearable. I, I can get a video out and within the next few seconds-ish, you know, it, it's good to go. It's not wasting my time just to wait for the export. So yeah, I don't feel that same helplessness just waiting on that export with 13 Pro Max. It's a lot more speedy to export, um, and that's probably thanks to that six gigs of RAM that's also on this device as opposed to the four in the 11 Pro Max. So all in all, to answer the question of should you upgrade from your 13 Pro Max from your 11 Pro Max, if you're a content creator, yes. If you go hard, mobile gaming, mobile gaming is your jam, you actually mobile game, yes, I say upgrade. Um, if you're neither of those things, if you got it, you are gonna get a bit of a improvement in performance. You are gonna get the 120 Hertz smooth motion. You're gonna get a little bit of a quality of life upgrade with this phone. Um, but if you're just a day-to-day -day app user and your battery's still in good shape, your phone's still in good shape, I wouldn't be in a hurry. Speaking of the battery, the battery life on this phone is pretty nice. I purposely let it die without charging and it was a day and a half before the phone actually died with no overnight charge. So if you're the everyday person, it's really up to you. Um, once your phone does start having its battery die and all that shit, um, yeah, go ahead and upgrade. But content creators and gamers should be salivating over this phone if they want the next iPhone. And if you wanna see every single spec side by side between these two phones, I have a link in the description below where you can click and you can see every single, there are many, many specs, so too many to cover in the video, but they're in the link below. So that's my perspective on what it was like for me to upgrade from the 11 Pro Max to 13 Pro Max. I absolutely love the difference in content I can make. I actually challenge you to go to my Instagram since I'm taking a lot more pictures of my setup with 13 Pro Max. I want you to see if you can spot the difference between my 13 Pro Max photos and my A7 III photos because I do run them both throughout the Lightroom or Photoshop before I post them because even if it's real close, that should let you know that this is a boss phone for a content creation. And I wasn't even a mobile gamer before I used this phone to test out Marvel Revolutions and I play that game pretty often now. And so I'm gonna start rambling on. Like and subscribe, this is... Uh, da, 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 da. Like and subscribe if this video helped you out at all. I'll see you next time. No, I don't like that closing. So if you're researching between upgrades and this video helped you out or this video helped you sway your decision a bit, please like and subscribe. Maybe even leave a comment letting me know kind of what you took away from this video. And I will see you guys in my next tech review slash comparison. Peace.